Crash, Crash, The Primitives. Who doesn't love that song? And uh, Snakeskin, Julie Felix, you're listening to The Barkley Hour on KPIS.FM. Guys, I'm going to play a trailer and uh, we're going to get back to the music, but we are going to do a little interview. I know this is intense, um, but that's sometimes what happens on this show. This trailer is for a documentary coming up and it's about people who um, they escaped. Uh, I believe they escaped. We'll learn more in the interview, but um, these are indie rockers that started a record label while still being Jehovah Witnesses, an indie record label um, and band. So it's called Witness Underground. Here's a trailer. Uh, we're going to hear from them uh, in a second. Hi, I'm Rhett Sutter, and I'm doing a demonstration tape on the modern audio equipment that our studio has, just in case you want to come and record in our modern studio. Clear Gopher was a record label and online community of Jehovah's Witnesses who all did indie music. It just blew up, but it all stayed in these weird little bounds. Witnesses can listen to music. It's not like a footloose situation where like the preacher's like, no music ever, but stuff is frowned upon. You need to really beware of that disco beat because that disco beat invites the demons. This is not inviting the demons, it's Lionel Richie. They think that any moment now, God is going to destroy the world. At 17, I basically thought to myself, what am I doing? Is this how I want to live my life? Like, do I even believe this? If they just treated people all right and had some kooky beliefs, I could totally live with it. But friends who committed suicide because they're gay and they're a witness, everything just changed. Music was my savior at that point. The moment people started taking it seriously is the moment that someone would start to, well, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. We start talking and she's like, well, so if we split up, would you still be a witness? What I actually said was, no, I don't believe any of it anymore. And I never saw her again. Your wife? Yeah, I never physically saw her again. It was an orphan, he didn't before I saw God. Nuclear Gopher was very special. It created a space for people to be eccentric and creative, and also as healthy as you could be in that culture. And while it lasted, it was like the best. So yeah, that was um, the Witness Underground, and actually, uh, we're gonna do a quick call. Actually, we're gonna do it now because um, I just realized that I left my battery charger with my friend Scott. Um, I know, so organized. So now I have to call because I have to do this interview before uh, my phone dies. <laughs> I know we keep it so professional here. So here we go, and I don't have um you know, that much context or experience with uh, Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, well, actually, I kind of weirdly do because I've had friends that were, um, but I still don't because I'm still like an outsider in it. Um, but let's give them a call and see what they have to say about it. If it works. It should work. <clears throat> Just a second. Hello? Yes. Hello. Oh. Hey, Hi. hey, you're on the air. You're on kpiss.fm. How are you doing? Sure, you're doing great. Awesome. Pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so you guys, like, um, I'm really sorry if I, like, blow this interview. So, like, don't get mad at me. I'm just, like, <laughs> in, just, okay. All right. Are you still Jehovah Witnesses? Like, what's up with that? No. no not that I, not, like, I'm not judging. I'm just, un I'm just saying, like, so this film, like, so tell me about it. You started a label while you were? Yeah, this is Ryan. Um, I uh, started the label for uh, music for me and my siblings. When we were Jehovah's Witnesses, we were raised by musical parents, and we didn't know anybody else doing anything like this, and uh, we liked making music. So um, what happened was is all these other Witness kids all decided they wanted to make music too, and it just kind of spread. It wound up started in Minnesota, and it wound up connecting up with Chicago and Wisconsin and St. Louis and wow, and so it was a big scene. Thing. 
yeah, it was it was huge. It would lasted about sixteen years. Wow. Okay. Um, now, did the scene? Um, I haven't seen the movie, obviously. Uh, did the scene like? Is it still going? Did it end because some people didn't become witnesses? Was there a lot of questioning about that in the scene, or was it just about the music? No, the scene was very much just about the music. And then um, I stopped being a witness because um, I kind of uh, lost my whole faith. And uh, since I was kind of running it, I mean, I was the like, guy, guy behind the label. Um, then then uh, it just kind of stopped. Okay, it now... Was- what, That's um, kind of what Scott can talk about that. <laughs> we're listening to the subject of the film, and I'm the director of the film. Okay, yeah, go uh, ahead. Like, expand on that. I'm sorry that we have to, you know, smash this all okay. so quick. But, you know, I mean, because no. scenes end all the time, but this is quite a reason for this one to particularly end. Yeah, it, it's, it's what makes it really special. So I really wanted to tell a story about people exiting the religion and, and kind of what that deconver- self-deconversion or auto-deconversion process is like for a lot of people. And a fair amount of them also got kicked out because they have a really strong policy of shunning and they just fellowship you with things that kick you out. Um, But what I thought was really special about telling this story was I've been a musician myself and I've been in a number of bands and I was friends with all these people in the religion at the time at the height of the scene and the last few years of it really and I I watched it sort of crumble as I was leaving as I moved away and um, I thought it'd be really interesting to tell the story of the scene because a lot of documentaries go into like the story of a band and that's, those are great. I love music documentaries, but I wanted to tell something that was like this bigger story that showed this bigger scene. And then like you follow a couple people on their exits, one, one man, one woman, Ryan being one of the key characters and, and another lead vocalist and of a band. Again, that I know you guys might've said this. How many bands are, are involved? How many bands are in the documentary? In like in the teens, right? Yeah, and there's like 42 songs in the documentary from different bands. Like, like, like we had a dozen artists. We had about a dozen bands involved over the course of was, the thing. Was yeah. it hard to get some of them um, on board with this, or like what's kind of like the status of everyone right now? We actually um, have enough people who have left that were involved in the documentary that we were pretty much able to keep with the, the portion of music that they worked on. There's still a ton of other music that uh, we, that was involved in our, our label. Our label is called nuclear gopher. And uh, there was a bunch of other music on there that doesn't, doesn't get into the film because the religious people involved would probably not be stoked. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Um, so I, Again, you can tell how much prep I've done. I have a friend who is an ex-witness, and I asked him for a question, and he said to ask you guys anything about the 144,000. <laughs> I like your friend. It's a fun guy. Uh, <laughs> what, is, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> okay. It's, so the, the lore of the Jehovah's Witnesses, that number's in Revelation three times. Um, the lore of the Jehovah's Witnesses is that those are the people who will be resurrected to be kings and priests to rule over the planet of oh. the lowly earthlings like the rest of us. Gotcha. <laughs> They're the only ones who go to heaven. The rest of us, we're all just supposed to hang out on earth after the earth becomes like a paradise. All right. So I'm going to play a song. Mm-hmm. I'm going to wrap it up. But where can we see this documentary? So the special thing and why we asked to do a radio show this week is because we're in the New York City Independent Film Festival this week, which is in... It's in a small theater. Ooh, um, congratulations. I'm going to play an applause. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, go on. Go yeah, on. So if you want to come down, you can buy tickets there for, uh, for Friday night at 830. Okay. And we'd love to meet you. Um, so that's the only way you can see it now. It's this one play this year that we know of for sure. Is it going to be next year, available we'll be digitally street. anywhere? It, it, it hopefully will be next year when we get a streaming deal, but it's like a long process for the film and indie film like this. So, gotcha. Um, but you're going to send me a little secret code so I can watch it, right? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> oh, okay. Also, another question. Another question. When you guys were kids, did you, did y'all go door to door with the booklets and everything? It's oh, the yeah. worst. You have to. Uh-huh. You I have to. You have to. Probably not done 10,000 totally. doors. Really? I probably went to my first door when I was like, Three and was just old enough to ring a doorbell and hold out a watchtower. <laughs> so imagine, imagine these kids bringing you magazines about. Oh Jesus. no, no, I I don't have to imagine. I don't have to and imagine because I I remember. Oh, okay, I don't I don't remember them being little kids, but I do remember. I gotta say, I do remember some of the guys being super hot. <laughs> that was us. 
Like, okay, there's yeah. some hotties in the witness <laughs> scene. I'm just saying. And I don't know if it was like the well, suits or what. I've always had a thing for suits, so I don't know yeah. if it's that. But yeah, I just want to say definitely you some like attractive. And also, <laughs> you know, now that I think about it, like, I don't know if you've ever made this connection, and I, I, I don't know if it's in the documentary. But, like, having to go door to door doing all that, like, in a way, that could make you, like, a really good promoter, you know? I think it's helping, actually, a lot. <laughs> we caught ourselves handing out literature, like, or, like, a, you know, like a postcard for our yeah. home, and we're like, wait a minute, this is too ironic. Yeah, we went, we went to a record store downtown today, and, and, and all of a sudden I was like, Scott, our postcard looks just like Watchtower literature. We're going to have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> see, you should actually see, I don't wait, you should actually go for that. Like you should use the, wa- well, maybe not. No, that yeah, could backfire. Uh, yeah, no, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well guys, I'm going to play uh, something from uh, the, this EP here. I'm gonna awesome. I'm gonna go with the uh, Le, the Lavone Floatin. Um, thank oh, you wow. so right. much for doing this interview, and uh, please feel free to post more information about the film in the chat and enjoy the rest of the show. The film is or the film's Witness Underground. Witnessunderground dot com. Yep. Go and check it out. Put it, we'll in, the it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Bye guys. Right Bye guys. Thanks, Gary. All right. Gary. Okay. So yeah, that was a uh, real uh, the. There we go. I I didn't even know the the scene, Jehovah ex witness scene. Here we go. Uh, this is uh, the Lavone with Floatin. You're listening to the Barkley Hour on KPIS.FM. And if you're interested in the film, please check the chat for more information. I'll also be posting it in the archives. Floatin. Floating on the river Floating Floating on the water Makes you feel so free Stream.